According to its state media, North Korea on Friday renewed a threat to launch missiles toward the U.S. territory of Guam. The country's government warned that any reckless moves by the U.S. would drive Pyongyang to take action. North Korea first talked about targeting the Pacific Island in August after U.S. President Donald Trump warned that the regime would face fire and fury like the world has never seen. A researcher at the Institute for American Studies of the North Korean Foreign Ministry said the U.S. military action hardens our determination that the U.S. should be tamed with fire and lets us take our hand closer to the trigger for taking the toughest countermeasure. Kim Jong-un regime is now calling yesterday's ballistic missile firing over Japan a, quote, meaningful prelude. The country promising more launches in the Pacific and an apparent threat to the U.S. territory of Guam. North Korean state media has just renewed their previous threat to launch nuclear missiles toward the U.S. territory of Guam, warning that if President Trump continues with his reckless moves, they would eventually take action. This threat has U.S. officials on high alert and has Mad Dog Mattis ready to act in an instant. From July to September, North Korea launched five separate missile tests, including two intercontinental ballistic missiles. Despite constant warnings from the US, Japan, South Korea, the United Nations, and even their ally China, North Korea has continued to push the bounds of our leaders' patience. The UN and President Trump have tried imposing sanctions on them by blocking key exports, which resulted in a nearly 70 percent decrease in their GDP. Yet, Kim Jong-un continues to plow forward despite all resistance, and seems intent on destroying all of Western civilization. Tokyo CNN reports that the little rocket man has renewed his threats to launch a missile towards Guam which U.S. leaders have repeatedly said would be treated as an act of war. North Korean state media on Friday renewed a threat to launch missiles toward the U.S. territory of Guam, warning that reckless moves by the U.S. would compel Pyongyang to take action. North Korea first said it was examining a plan to target the Pacific Island in August after U.S. President Donald Trump warned the isolated regime would face fire and fury like the world has never seen following a U.S. intelligence assessment that North Korea had produced a miniaturized nuclear warhead. We have already warned several times that we will take counteractions for self-defense, including a salvo of missiles into waters near the U.S. territory of Guam. The KCNA report quoted Kim Kwong Hak, a researcher at the Institute for American Studies of the North Korean Foreign Ministry, as saying, President Trump has recently sent a major warship over to the Korean Peninsula, in anticipation of Kim Jong-un's psychotic war moves. Despite the United States' superior military on all levels, North Korea continues to threaten us with violence, however. These latest threats to nuke Guam come after weeks of rising tensions and bubbling tempers, as Trump and North Korea have exchanged a barrage of remarks towards one another via Twitter and other outlets. Tensions will continue to rise however, because come Monday, the US and South Korea will conduct a simulation war drill. Joint military exercises are particularly infuriating to Pyongyang. The North Korean government views them as a dress rehearsal for an invasion, even as the U.S. insists they are purely defensive in nature. The KCNA report listed a string of perceived U.S. provocations, including a litany of bombastic threats from President Trump, recent deployments of a U.S. nuclear submarine and aircraft carrier to the region, and a new round of high-intensity U.S. and South Korea joint naval drills.
The article ended with the familiar warning, that the U.S. would be solely responsible for pushing the situation on the peninsula to the point of explosion. North Korea's missiles have a range of 150 kilometers to over 10,000 kilometers, more than enough to strike at Guam. Un's hunger for power only continues to grow despite massive global backlash, and as Trump has said before, many are beginning to believe that there's now only one thing which North Korea understands. In a new incendiary statement, Pyongyang promised to fire a salvo of missiles at the U.S. territory of Guam and keep its hands closer to trigger a mid-major U.S. South Korea drills involving B-1 bombers and a carrier strike group. As Washington and its Asia-Pacific allies prepare for a joint maritime exercise, the North Korean government issued new threats to target the U.S. territory of Guam. The upcoming war games, which involve the USS Ronald Reagan aircraft carrier, are set to begin on Monday off the shores of South Korea. An op-ed published by Pyongyang's KCNA state news agency said, We have already warned several times that we will take counteractions for self-defense including a salvo of missiles into waters near the U.S. territory of Guam, an advanced base for invading the DPRK, where key U.S. bases are located. The U.S. military action pardons our determination that the U.S. should be tamed with fire and lets us take our hand closer to trigger for taking the toughest countermeasure. Kim Kwong Hak, a researcher at the Institute for American Studies of North Korea's Foreign Ministry, said in the op-ed. Pyongyang's statement comes as the U.S. deploys additional Navy warships to South Korea's ports. Earlier, the USS Michigan nuclear-capable Ohio-class submarine moored in the South Korean port of Pusan, according to the U.S. 7th Fleet. Next week, the USS Statham and USS Mustin Hourly Burke-class guided missile destroyers and the USS Ronald Reagan are expected to join the naval drill scheduled for October 16-26 in the Sea of Japan and the Yellow Sea to hone communications, interoperability, and partnership, the statement added. KCNA's statement also came on the heels of a flyby of two U.S. Air Force B-1B Lancer strategic bombers over the Korean Peninsula in a show of force on Tuesday night. Two B-1Bs took off from Guam and traveled in the vicinity of the Sea of Japan, staging an aerial exercise with Japanese and South Korean combat aircraft in the middle of the night. U.S. President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un have exchanged personal insults over the past few months, adding fuel to the mounting tensions. Earlier in September, Trump called Kim a madman and little rocket man, saying the North Korean leadership won't be around much longer. North Korea called Trump a mentally deranged dotard and an old psychopath. Following a meeting with top U.S. military brass at the White House last week, Trump made headlines with a mysterious comment, This is the calm before the storm. He later explained the remark was in reference to potential action against Pyongyang. U.S. President Donald Trump has soundly gained the reputation of a person who does not hesitate much before taking to social media to speak out loudly, from praising jobs in the domestic labor market to waging a war of words against little rocket man Kim Jong-un, the leader of North Korea. Trump has recently been increasingly active on Twitter, insisting that talks with Pyongyang make no sense and hinting at a military intervention. Donald J. Trump Twitter says, being nice to Rocket Man hasn't worked in 25 years, why would it work now? Clinton failed, Bush failed, and Obama failed. I won't fail. I told Rex Tirson, our wonderful Secretary of State, that he is wasting his time trying to negotiate with little Rocket Man. Kim Jong-un of North Korea who is obviously a madman who doesn't mind starving or killing his people, will be tested like never before. Duh. North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. He has been very threatening uh, beyond a normal statement. And as I said, they will be met with fire, fury, and frankly power, the likes of which this world has never seen before. North Korea's rhetoric has just 
ratcheted up louder and louder and more threatening. So I think the president, what the president was doing is sending a strong message to North Korea in language that Kim Jong-un would understand because he doesn't seem to understand diplomatic language. And I think Americans should sleep well at night. I have no concerns about uh, this particular uh, rhetoric of the last few days. I think the, the president, again, uh, as commander in chief, I think he felt it necessary to issue a very strong statement directly to North Korea. But I think what the president was just reaffirming is the United States has the capability to fully defend itself from any attack and defend our allies, and we will do so. And so the American people should sleep well at night. That's right, Brooke. Multiple officials tell myself and my colleague Barbara Starr that U.S. intelligence has assessed, though not formally concluded, that North Korea today possesses the capability to miniaturize a nuclear warhead, put it atop an intercontinental ballistic missile. Now, to be clear, this is not yet a consensus intelligence community view. Uh, that is one thing. And it is also the view of the U.S. intelligence community that this remains an untested capability. Uh, and, of course, testing is key to be able to get that re-entry vehicle back into the atmosphere after launching a missile with this range. That said, this is part of consistent progress that North Korea has been making over the last several months and years in this direction. Uh, one person briefed on the intelligence telling me that it's a question of when, not if, North Korea will get this capability and test this capability. Keep in mind as well that the U.S. military has been preparing along these lines for some time, giving, giving itself uh, offensive military options to deal with a capability like this, as well as defensive options. But again, multiple officials telling us that this is an assessment in the U.S. intelligence community that, you, that North Korea has an untested capability of putting a miniaturized nuke on top of a, a, an intercontinental ballistic missile. And, and, Brooke, that is not an insignificant step forward. The North Korean regime teaches its citizens to hate America. But why? It began with a war that's almost forgotten in the United States. After World War II, two superpowers divided the Korean Peninsula along the 38th parallel. The Soviet Union occupied the North and the United States the South. This resulted in the creation of two separate states, the Republic of Korea, or South Korea, and the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, or North Korea. Most historians say the North invaded the South on June 25, 1950, when the Korean War began. This is war. The North tells its citizens America actually started the war. Over the next three years, around one million North Koreans died in the fighting, including an estimated 600,000 civilians. Active hostilities ended in 1953, but technically the war is still ongoing because no peace treaty was ever signed. A fact North Koreans are never allowed to forget. Since then, the country's founder, President Kim Il-sung, his son, General Kim Jong-il, and grandson, Marshal Kim Jong-un, have all dialed up the anti-U.S. rhetoric, including blaming the U.S. for international sanctions they claim have caused North Korea's economic woes. Making America into an ever-present threat has helped the Kims unify the nation behind their regime. Recent escalating tensions between Washington and Pyongyang only help promote that narrative. Keeping the population focused on an external enemy, the United States, and having zero tolerance for political dissent. Ambassador Haley is joining us now. Ambassador, thanks for your time this afternoon. You called this the single largest economic sanctions package leveled against North Korea. Do you expect a different result from these sanctions? Well, thank you very much for having me. First of all, it's a new day at the UN. This was a day of action. This was a day where we stopped all the talk. And this is the day where we said to North Korea, they have to stop their irresponsible actions. And I think that what you saw today was a unanimous vote that said we're going to make sure that the North Korea understands what we're talking about. This resolution is the strongest um, resolution with sanction measures that we've seen in a generation. It will go after a third of North Korea's hard currency. It bans coal, it bans iron, it bans um, additional laborers that they can send overseas. It, it has quite um, huge implications to North Korea. We hope they take notice and we'll see what happens. But again, the question was, do you expect a different result from North Korea? Because we know time and again, sanctions have been imposed, sanctions have been increased, and yet North Korea's program continues to progress. 
Well, I think what everybody needs to understand is the revenue that goes into North Korea doesn't go in to feed its people who are starving. Right. Um, instead, what it's doing is it's going to fund the, the, the reckless nuclear program. So if we reduce the hard currency, we're reducing the funding that allows them to do that. Secondly, we hope that they take note. We hope that they realize this was the international community speaking in one voice, saying that this activity has to stop. They now have a decision to make. This was a gut punch to North Korea today. They can either now take heed and say, okay, let's stop, let's start being responsible and let's see another avenue, or they can continue what they're doing and the international community will continue to respond.